Uh, first off, I'd like to say my apologies for last night. I was kind of tired and it was not my best presentation. But I'd like to talk a little bit about the Raspberry Pi. This is a full Linux computer that was brought out last, well, it was, it's actually been in design for about six years now. It was developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, even Upton, I believe, in the um, UK. And this device is, it's a board that is a complete Linux, com or complete computer. It's based on a Broadcom 2835 CPU. It has, uh, it's the size of a pack of cigarettes, essentially. And it has connections on it for, well, it takes a, boots from a, uh, from an eight gigabyte SD card that is plugged in here. It has output for HDMI video. It has uh, Ethernet uh, 100 base TX coming in. It has two USB ports. Over here it has an audio port and it puts out composite video as well. It has a GPI, should be a 26 pin GPIO port where you can hook on external devices. It has a JTAG port and a port for display and a camera, which are ribbon type connectors. That uh, These are for cameras and displays that have not yet been released. Uh, the GPIO, there's a GERT board that has come out recently. Gert, uh, Lou, Gert Van Lu, who is a uh, Dutch uh, electrical engineer, has put together a board that will be uh, assembled by you as a solder. You know, you'll have to solder and so on. But uh, that, I believe, is about uh, that. Excuse me. Uh, that board will be available very soon. I believe it, I have mine scheduled to come in sometime in November. Uh, the board, uh, the case that you see it come in here. This was a this was an add-on aftermarket case. I went on eBay and found an interesting one that snaps together nicely, six pieces, very well cut out of laser. Um, and the neat thing about the computer is uh, oh, a couple of things about the uh, power. 20, 256 megabytes of RAM is available on this. Uh, the main chip, the uh, Broadcom 2835, sits underneath the memory, and the other chip on here drives the Ethernet port. This computer altogether, the neat thing, the cost is 35 bucks plus tax and shipping. You know, so I think I've I think I've got about forty dollars a piece invested in them in the boards. The case was another fifteen dollars. Power supply, they like to get a one amp power supply. This is a two amp supply. I was able to pick up for about ten bucks on eBay. The card is an you know another eight dollars, whatever, something like that. Um, and this is a very capable uh, computer. We had I had this hooked up on Thursday. I got six of them for my lab at Cleveland State University. I hooked up six of these uh, across with monitors, keyboard, and mouse, and uh, we had a, on one of these, I had Quake running, Quake 3, I'm sorry, running as a server. Also, somebody was playing Quake 3 on it, and we had the other five were all accessed into that through the local area network. We had a tournament, Quake 3 tournament going, driven strictly by six Raspberry Pis. And we had people in the lab going crazy over this, just playing. And uh, as I say, I like to tell people, Quake 3, if you ask, what is it, what's, what's it like? I've never heard of that. Well, it's the computer equivalent of taking 16 monkeys, putting them in a pit with sticks, and they all beat each other over the head until <laughs> still they're senseless. OK, but anyway, it's, it's fun to do. And uh, there's a lot else, there's a lot of other things you can do. This is aimed at a youth market, people who are new coming into computers who can then experiment with the computers. They can also work with the uh, external I.O. to get outside the computer. So this changes from simply being an appliance, which is what so many of the computers have become today. I mean, you remember most of you here probably were here at the dawn of computing, back in the 70s, back in the 80s, when we were looking at computers as a new device, as something amazing, as something and, and that everybody else was looking and saying to you, what the heck are you going to do with a computer? That's one of those things they use in business. And you were saying, no, this is a neat thing. I want to work on this. That's how I was, at least. And I, I know a lot of you, I'm sure, were like that. 
these, uh, to look at this and to realize how much, I had a computer that was the size of half of this table tall. I had a big drawer that pulled out. It had inside it a five megabyte platter that pulled up with a handle. It was a Micronova, Data General Micronova, and had another built-in five megabyte, a whole 10 megabytes we had. You could back up the top to the bottom. It only took like uh, half an hour, I think. Anyway, it was to think that this is probably a thousand times faster, at least a thousand times more capacity in it. And the graphics are amazing in here, by the way. This has 48 GPU cores in the processor running at 24 gigaflops. So we were running that Quake, by the way, the Quake 3 the other day, with a 40 to 50 frame per second rate. This was not shabby. If I can, I, I can try to set this up in the room if somebody wants to, to get a demo at some point. I don't know if I can, I think there's a DVI input, or sorry, HDMI input into the computer, into the um, screen in our rooms. So I might be able to try. Anyway. Jackie, are you running Fedora, the Fedora Remix? I'm running the, yeah, I'm running the Remix that's called uh, Raspbian Linux, R-A-S-P-B-I-A-N. And this is available on <coughs> www.raspberrypi, P-I. R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y-P-I dot O-R-G. Raspy and Linux, this is, um, this is the August 16th, 2012 version. I've seen um, a later one that has just come out that indicates that they can do a turbo mode with it. They're releasing it. The, neat, the other neat thing about the Quake tournament the other day was after this, uh, the students had been playing for a while, I came over and I stuck my hand on the computer, barely warm barely above room temperature. Mm -hmm. This thing just has no fans mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. So, amazing yeah. piece of work. And yeah. this, uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation is a charitable foundation, so they're not selling these at any great profit. Although on eBay for the last few months, they've been skyrocketing. You know, they, they well, they were very high in price. They've dropped a little bit now since they've become readily available. Yeah. I thought I had seen something in the last three weeks or so that uh, Sony was gonna be involved in, and be making these things. It could be, but I have not heard that. I've, the only thing I've heard is they moved the production. The original production was in China, and they moved the production back to a house in Wales, uh, a, a production house in Wales. So they're, it's now back in the UK. Now the newer boards, uh, they came out with some mounting holes and stuff, and they said manufacture in the UK. And, and if I could just add a couple of things. Um, the Fedora Remix was done in Canada at New York University in Toronto. And if you go to my blog, there's some photographs of the release of okay. the first uh, Fedora uh, with their developers. Um, so that that's kind of interesting. And, and I just want to stress the point that um, the whole impetus behind the effort was to encourage kids to get excited about going under the hood of a computer. And it's, it's a great, great endeavor. Um, I've forgotten the, the developer's name in the UK, but he's Even, say, he's even the, Upton? Yeah. He's, he has devoted a great deal of time and effort to this, and it's, I think in North America, the, the units are distributed through Allied Electronics, at yeah. least in Canada, they are. You can order these, uh, if you wish, through Newark, uh, Newark Electronic also. That's where I got my Newark Element 14. Um, they're $35 plus tax and shipping. Uh, they do charge tax uh, in all states, and they do charge some shipping. Uh, I've got about four of these. I could, three or four I could probably sell with the cases and stuff like and the power supplies out in my car. The reason um, I can always reorder them. The reason the prices were high on eBay were That's you registered uh, yeah. to get invited to buy them in the original allotment, and then they had QA problems in the manufacturing. But I think now they sorted that out. But yeah, they they were real. Oh, sorry. I was going to say if if you have kids, nephews, grandchildren, just just buy them in bulk. Yeah, it has Hand Python out. also. <laughs> Python and Scratch are a couple of languages that are built in. This thing has a graphics user interface as well as the command line interface. You can set it to come up either way. But uh, the, the graphics interface is very nice and it is, um, it, with Scratch and Python, kids can be doing small programs, playing, um, you know, running the computer, trying things. The thing, again, I think the thing that's neat, I was, uh, saying back when you guys were working with these things in the 70s and 80s were we were 
all under the hood people. We were all people who like to look at, a, say, a car and, you know, do you want to be a driver or do you want to be a mechanic? You know, people can pick a computer up and they can drive it like a car and you can get from point A to point B and get your job done. But we're mechanics. We like to look and see what goes on underneath, how this thing works. You know, I always look at a box like this and I say, okay, I want to know everything about this. I don't want to just use it. I want to have, I want to understand how it works. I don't want there to be magic in the middle. I don't want there to be a, uh, something I don't understand from point A to point B. How did I get there? You know, like, okay, you type the program in and then you press compile and then the magic happens <laughs> and then you get a program, you know. So I like to find out what that magic step is. These are going to be fun for a lot of people. Question. The one thing, speaking of hardware interface, the 26 pins on there has a UART and an I squared C port, but it's all 3.3 volt logic. So be careful, it's not 5 volt. Yeah. Where did you get the case from? Oh, Do they uh, have a link to it, or did you eBay do eBay, and I can. Uh, I have it on my uh, list of items there on eBay, so I can I can get you a link to it. I think the case was they want fourteen dollars plus four dollars shipping right now, but the guys had the price go up and down slightly, you know, within that range. So you know, they're like fifteen dollars or something if you buy a few of them. And Peter, keep in mind it's a DIY, so there's lots of Lego style. Yeah, there's lots uh, of other cases. I've, I've, like I've done a case. But I mean, it's like, this is because this case comes assembled. apart. I, I published a mid-century modern, given my interest in architecture, on the, comes apart. On the uh, Twitter feed yeah. for Raspberry Pi. That's what I like about it. Uh, yeah, it comes neat apart. Neat assembly. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have a few more of these, as I said. I, I, yes. had, uh, I just... Got a couple. I got a couple because I thought, well, it'd be fun to, you know, have a few more. And uh, I caught a couple orders from people. Asked them, asked me to get them. Uh, I put six in the lab last week, and I'll probably order some more this week if you guys want some of these. What I have, yeah. You want one? Okay. Um, okay. Other questions? Uh, are we doing a lunch, Richard? No. So that can, you can use a television screen. Then. Yeah, you could use a television screen. You can also use this as a blind Linux node. If you have and if you have a local area network set up in your house or office, you can plug this guy in uh, with the power, the boot up, and uh, plug into the Ethernet port. It doesn't have to have any video. It doesn't have to have a keyboard or mouse. You can just use it as a Linux node, and you could jack into it from a regular computer through the net and it has its own IP, it'll be given its own IP address through DHCP when it connects with the router. So if you'd like to use it that way, you could also just, you know, plug it in and, and uh, plug and plug it in the wall somewhere, plug it in the ethernet and walk away and use it. I've got a cheap 22 inch monitor that has an HDMI port and a USB port, so I just hook up the HDMI and power it off the USB port on the monitor. Yeah, yeah. The nice thing, by the way, about these, this uh, particular, I, I, I looked around for a good adapter too on eBay. This one has a, not only a micro USB plug to power the uh, Raspberry Pi, but it has an additional USB port out here, so you can power a second device. I thought that was kind of cool for for the price and everything. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, uh, other questions? I just saw here the offer for the box for Raspberry Pi for $14. That's the one. Uh, yeah. That's the one. Most probably. Plus, plus shipping. Plus shipping, yeah. Yeah. That's the one. Shipping is about. I think they want four bucks for shipping. Part of the philosophy is you should make your own. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grab the, the board. There's lots of schematics on the Twitter feed. Yeah, yeah there's a ton of information out there. Their own boxes and cases. Oh, yeah. If you go to raspberrypi.org, there's a couple. There's a, a magazine called the Magpie with some simple programs yeah, and things right. for. Exactly it's very colorful. It's great for kids to look at. And again, if you've got young people who have any interest at all in computing, this is a fantastic thing to, to give them and let them work with. The, it, the, the original impetus for this, by the way, went back to the 1981 ZX81. Do you remember that, Lodi? The Sinclair? I'm sorry, yes, the ZX81? Yeah, oh, that's right. That was the idea that you had something that you could connect to your TV and work with it, but I mean, this is, 
thousands of times more capable. The, the, the ZX HDMI had a 1K of memory and a little bit of keyboard. You know, <laughs> 16K add-on that would fall. Off. Oh, okay, 16 that would fall off. Okay, yes, it was a heavy block. You plug it in. I think this will hold up a little bit, a little bit better. Yes, the keyboard had a memory. It adds the weatherproofing memory. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Any other questions? Is there software that you could put on that? Uh, uh, SD card? What, what kind of memory card is it? It's an SD card. It's eight gigabytes. Uh, is what I have uh, some up, but you could go up to sixty-four gigabytes. I would gigabytes. imagine that if you plugged in an external hard drive on you the could. USB, you could make this a SAN. Yeah, you could. They made these into XBMCs. Uh, they run um, Xbox Media Center with it. They've used these for a number of, you know, number of creative uses. They have a lot of creative uses on RaspberryPi.org, so you can, you know, you can check that out. Anybody make a battery supply? Uh, you could, you could do battery power too. The power is not that. It's a one amp draw at most. Uh, so you're going to be, um, you could run it with a five volt um, supply. I mean, a five volt um, battery pack. You just mentioned maximum storage capability, 64. 64. Because 64 is. Yeah, I mean that's for the, this, for this card. But then you could go actually. No, what I, what I meant, what here, I meant, the limit USB. for the normal SD high, ca high capacity is yeah. 32 gigabyte. Isn't oh, it? I thought it was 64. I thought I thought it was, the no. SDXC, that's the new high capacity. So, yeah, I believe so because I read recently that they put a cluster together of these 64 in a cluster with like built with Lego bricks around uh -huh. it. Yeah. But they put made a supercomputer connecting this all together, 64 Raspberry Pis, each with six. I thought they said 64 mm -hmm. megs or 64 gigs each. Eric, are you in the site? And they uh, all together this uh, for $2,500. They had a supercomputer. <laughs> so you know, a, 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 a $2,500 supercomputer. A Beowulf Raspberry Pi cluster, exactly. So. If the, this is a this is an interesting toy. So if uh, mm -hmm. you know if anybody's Speaking interested, I guess see me. I think this is an inflection point just to get yeah. the next generation into. Well, the temperature I think it's of the I go to and the Broadcom chip isn't that a custom chip? Yeah, it it is. It's a, yeah. Yeah. Well, even Upton works for Broadcom, That's evidently. Right. So uh, yeah, he, that was his his baby. But they put this. Uh, this took him six years to put together. They released it on February 29th, 2012. And it, it's gone crazy ever since. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you please contact me for any further information on this, if you'd like.